In the last episode, we removed Project Yellow's transmission case, transmission case cover, and everything associated to fifth gear. Unfortunately, we discovered the countershaft rear bearing had exploded. In fact, after cleanup, this is the only piece that remains. This is the inner race of that exploded bearing. Today's goal is to remove everything out of the transaxle case so that way we can clean it. So before we get started, let's identify everything that we see here. This is a C56 and this is the transaxle case. This is the final drive, a tapered roller bearing, and underneath here is the differential. Here you have the one, two shift fork, this is the 3 4 shift fork. This is the reverse shift fork. And this right here in the middle is the number one gear shift head. Here you have the reverse shift arm. This is the reverse idler gear. This is the thrust washer. And this is the shaft for the reverse idler gear. And of course, you have your input shaft or main shaft. And then right here, you have your output shaft or your counter shaft. Let's get started. Let's remove the reverse idler gear. All you do is lift the shaft up about a half an inch and this guy slides right out. Now we're gonna remove the reverse shift arm bracket and these are 12 millimeter. And all you do is pull it out like that. Now we need to remove this spring clip here and there's another one under here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to lift the reverse shift fork up a little bit and I'm gonna place the screwdriver in here so we have better access to this spring clip that's right under here. Here's the reverse shift fork that we just lifted with this screwdriver right here. And if you look closely here, there is a spring clip right here and there's also one right here. So to grant access to these guys, we're gonna to have to rotate this guy around. Check this thing out. I'm just gonna rotate it around like that. And now you can see the ends of it. And then I'll do the same thing with this one. This one's in the back right here. You can kind of see it. And give this a little push right there. Now with the spring clips oriented properly, I'm gonna take this beach towel and just kind of put it around my whole working area like this. And the whole idea is, is when we pop these guys out, we want those spring clips to stay within this blanket because when you pop that thing off, if it goes flying, it's going to turn into a Jesus clip. And what is a Jesus clip? Well, if that thing goes flying, you can't find it. You're going to be like, Jesus. Two screwdrivers that are equal length. Kind of position them like this. Strike it with your hammer and it just went flying off and it got stuck in here somewhere. I don't know exactly where it is, but I think it fell down into there, which is fine. So let's work on this second one right here. Okay, I heard that one go off into the abyss somewhere. I don't know exactly where that is, but that's okay. Oh, there it is right there. Okay, so there's that guy right there. We'll put that in our pile. And here's the second one right here. So now we don't have to find that one. Next, we're gonna remove these three 10 millimeter bolts. And this one here holds the one, two shift fork. This one holds the three, four shift fork. And this one right here, this is actually the number one gear shift head. So let's take those guys out. Again, 10 millimeter. So before we go any further, now what we need to do is we need to look at these shift shafts right here. So this is number three and this is number two. So if we were to draw a line between three and two, that line would be this direction right here. So what we want to do is we want to lift that end of the transmission up, but perpendicularly to a line between shift shaft three and shift shaft two. So let's do that. You see the two right there, which means that we're going to put this hammer right about here. That looks about right. And with that lifted up, now what we're going to do is we're going to remove shift shaft two. But to get shift shaft two out, 
we have to understand that there are two spherical balls in this reverse shift fork right here. And the reason why we pick it up is because I don't want them to fall out. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick up the number one gear shift head like this. And I'm going to stick my finger in between here. And I'm going to try and grab shift shaft two right here. And I'm going to try and pull it out. If it doesn't want to come out, I'm going to lift this shift shaft three up a little bit. So let's see if we can get it out. That means it's in the right position. By putting these guys level, that allows it to come out properly. So let's put this thing down. Then we're going to pull out shift shaft one right here. We'll get the number one shift gear head, the one, two shift fork. And then here's where we got to be really careful. And we're going to grab my magnet right here and you could actually see the spherical balls in here. So because it's at an angle, I'm going to rock this thing back like this so the balls don't fall out. And you can see that ball right there. Look at that ball right there. So I'm going to pick that ball up with my magnet. So there's the first one. Let's put that one away. Now, there is a second spherical ball in here. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to put my magnet in here like this and I'm going to dump it like this and you'll see the ball fall out. There's the ball right there. So be careful with these spherical balls. Don't lose those things, put them in your tray. And then this thing just comes apart like that. Now, let's not forget to remove this three, four shift fork. So what are we left with? We're left with the input shaft or the main shaft, the counter shaft or the output shaft. And we have our final driver and our diff underneath here. So to get these two guys out, you want to grab them just like this and we're going to pull straight up and then they come right out. To get the diff out, it's pretty simple. All you do is you stick your finger in here and lift up. And let's talk about the diff real quick. The diff has two roller tapered roller bearings on them. One here and one over here. And this big ring right here is the final drive, which is bolted to the differential. Also, this orangish ring right here, this is a ring for the vehicle speed sensor. Also, if you look at this thing carefully, it has a rod right in here. And that rod, if you look through this direction right here, it looks like a double lock, like on a door, this rod right here. So if you could see through this, I don't know if you could see through there or not. If you can see through there on the sides of it, that means that you have an open diff. The factory LSD, these holes will be much smaller. You can still see through it, but not nearly as much as this. And it won't look like a double lock on a door. And then in here, let's notice what we've got inside here. Where's my magnet? Oh, here it is. Okay, so what do we have in here? We have some sort of oil plate right here, a cover plate that's 12 millimeter. This is a bearing retainer clip. 12 millimeter, and this is a magnet that collects anything that is ferrous that's floating around in the transmission fluid. So let's set that aside. And then in here, this is the outer race. This guy right here is the outer race for the tapered roller bearing. And this right here, that is a shim. This shim comes in 19 different thicknesses, and this is what helps set the preload on your tapered roller bearings for the diff, whether it be open or LSD. Also, you've got two bearings here. This is the one right here. This is the one for the counter shaft or the output shaft. There's also a plastic oil diverter in here, which just pops right out. And underneath here, this is the one for the input shaft, the bearing for the input shaft. And underneath here, there is a seal that we are going to replace. So let's remove these guys real quick. 12 millimeter, 12 millimeter again, there's also an input shaft seal right here. So to get this guy out, you can try and pry from this side, or you can flip it over and try and knock it out with a screwdriver. 
and there she goes. And here's the seal right here. This is actually the side that faces outwards. Well, in this direction, it would be like this. So this goes in just like that and just kind of stuffs right in there and that's the way it fits in there. So what I did was I stuck this thing from the other side and I kind of got into it like, like this and then pushed it out. So there's an aluminum surface in here. So you just want to grab this just inside without messing up the aluminum. And you could do it around here. You just keep rotating around and then it'll pop out. Okay, that faces the outside. We're just trying to grab it like right in here. The bigger, the better, as long as it fits in here and that'll be good. So all we're gonna do, is let's just pound this guy real quick. So this normally goes in here like this. So you can kind of see the tapered roller bearing right here. And then this guy fits in here like this. That's how it fits. In the next episode, we're gonna take this Lazy Susan and make it into a stripper pole. Don't hate the pole, hate the game. Also, strippers are people too. This is AJ with Relentless Racing. Stay relentless and I'll see you on the track.